What is going on everyone and today we are here for week 10 of the Ferrari Fixed Challenge Track Guide Series. This week we are at Virginia International Raceway. Um, it should be quite a good week of racing. There is some definite key points that you have to focus on a little bit more this week. Uh, the car definitely favours quite a lot of um, oversteer rotation on slow to medium speed exits. Um, and if you're not careful, it'll catch you out quite easily. Just the way that the engine spools up with the turbos now, it does tend to actually want to oversteer the car on exit a little bit. So, um, And then there's probably a little bit you need to look at in your braking, um, especially in the slower speed stuff like the big braking zones. The car does tend to favour a little bit of understeer on entry as well. So they're just a couple of key points. Um, at the end of the video, I talk about brake bias a little bit, so make sure you tune into that bit at the end as well. So hopefully the, this is uh, going to help you progress this week. Um, I don't think it's probably the fastest lap out for the week, definitely. Uh, there's probably a little bit room of improvement even for myself. I um, just really struggled with overseer this week, to be honest with you. So um, it, it took me a little bit just to get my head around how the car was actually responding to it. So thank you to everybody that's been tuning in, watching these guides each week. The, the views on these videos have been absolutely incredible to see each week. So I really appreciate that, guys. If you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button and turn on them notifications for future content. Um, it really means a lot, guys, and it helps us a lot. So other than that, uh, we're going to get into it. Um, so, yeah, so let's go. All right, guys, so now we're going to break down the lap. So as we're coming down into turn one, you're looking for just before the two boards. So it's roughly about this point here. So it's about a car length before. And the only reason I'm doing this is I want to make sure that as I approach the corner, I'm able to actually focus on the drive out of the corner. So this car in particular, um, obviously I haven't done a lot of other GT cars this season, um, but this car is definitely favoring a lot of oversteer on exit through these sort of medium to high speed sort of turning as you go in corners. So you'll see here as I come out of the corner, you can sense the grip limit on the rear of the tire as we're coming through. So just before the two, I want to focus on a nice big brake pressure, get the car turning nice and early and then focus on driving that car as smoothly and straight as possible coming out. So come down, all the way back to second gear, so, and then you're looking for this point right here. So you'll see, like, the line takes a little change here. I'll just go back slightly. You'll see there's a little kink in the white line, and then it goes off, and then it comes back on itself. So we're looking for that kink right there. And as I turn, as I get to there, that's where I really start to turn the car at the corner. I clip the apex, but I don't clip it till about halfway through. 
And then you'll see here, lots of steering lock on. You'll see my hands start to open up now. As I'm opening the wheel, I'm trying to accelerate the car, but I'm trying to keep the car narrow, as you can see. The wider you go, the bigger the lock is, the more oversteer you're going to have. So try and keep that car close to that secondary curb as you exit out of the corner. Up to fourth. Oh, sorry, up to third gear. And then what you want to do is you want to sort of turn in, get close to the curb on the inside, then let the car sort of diagonal across. Use the curb. I'm just going to stop that and go back a little bit. All right, so use this little curb here as you start of your brake marker, as you just sort of pass it, start to brake. I don't run the car fully out to the edge of the road. As you can see, I'm running the car about half a car width from the edge. Now, the reason I'm doing that here is you'll notice the edge of the road looks quite broken up and rough, and it is quite easy to over rotate the car on that stuff on top of the fact that the car's already got a bit of oversteer programmed into it so i'm just giving myself that extra little bit of room just to be safe so i don't make a mistake grab the curb or grab the grass and and rotate the car as i turn the car in so you'll see i turn the car in quite early i use a little bit of curb on the inside here just to help with a little bit of rotation in second gear here so i'm trying to get the car to pivot more i use the escape curb, you'll see I had a little wiggle there on the exit, but that's not too bad. Use all that escape curb. Second gear through here, then nice big brake pressure right at this point here. So there's no real official marker here. It's more of a field corner. But what you want to do is make sure you sacrifice your entry here to really focus on the exit. So as you're coming into the corner, you'll see... I turn in over this curb and I try and set myself up more in the middle, but the car snaps on me. So you can see I'm sort of pointed at a bit of a weird direction at this point here. But then I turn the car back in, use a little bit more curb, and then let the car open up really quickly and run it right to the edge of the road. I'm going to pause it here. I'm turning in just before the end of the curb on the outside here. And then when I turn the car in, I, I wouldn't say I lift off the throttle completely, but I breathe off the throttle to help with a bit of rotation and then I focus on just missing that curb but I want to get as close to it as possible and then running as much over this curb as possible. If I don't do that I'm not going to get the car to get on the throttle early enough. If I clip the curb on the inside too much the car actually over rotates so that's why I sort of try and stay off it a little bit. So then we go flat out down here. You're going to get to fifth gear by the end of it. Use all the curbings through this section here. Get close here. And then I'm just going to slide down here. So, And we're going to stop it at this point right here. So just before, it's it's quite a hard marker, but it's the best one i found for this car, is there's a tyre wall on the left-hand side right up against the, the green Armco barrier in front of the houses, right? I'm using just before the end of the tyre wall on the left. Now, if you've got triples, you'll spot it pretty easily. Same with VR. Single screen, you're going to have quite a lot of drama with it, just being able to see where it is on the circuit. It. So that you've got to sort of take with a grain of salt on how you approach this corner. But that's my little marker over there. And then from that point there, I bang it back one gear. I turn the car in extremely early, as you can see. I use a lot of curb. And as soon as I grab to that curb, I'm starting to pick that throttle up again straight away. Because I want to run the car off the curb, use all the track there, and run it down the hill. I'm looking for the two board, so I'm going to break right there. So, as you can see, I ran it back up, and then I'm heading back towards the left. Big brake pressure. Turn the car in at the last board on the left-hand side, so the arrow. From fourth gear back to second, you'll see I let the car set quite wide again, but I still... Same again here. I don't go right to the edge of the road. I give myself a good foot and a half. I'm trying to use as much track as possible without upsetting the balance of the car. There is actually a bump out there as well that does even give it a little bit more sort of unnatural feeling as you turn the car in. So turn the car in. As you can see, the car understeered ever so slightly there. As long as you're sort of clipping that apex when you're in line with the flag marshal hut, you're good. Unwind the lock as quick as possible. Use all the back of this curb here. Pick up the throttle as early as possible so you can focus on the run. Down the back straight. Nice big run down here. Set yourself up for the final group of corners. 
All right, so as we come over the crest, I start to look to my right-hand side and set myself up. I'm just going to start to slow it down now. And we're looking for that two board. So as we get nice and close to that two board, nice big break pressure now. You'll see I just cracked the limiter in fifth. And then I'm off the off the throttle and I'm braking nice and aggressively. Down all the gears. Back to second gear. You'll see I use quite a bit of curb here. And then I diagonal the car. Not completely, but just to a point where I can then feel comfortable to turn the car in. So I sort of move to the center of the road because I find like if I can do that, the car just tends to grip a little bit more near the curb. If I stay out wide and try and turn it bigger, it just doesn't seem to have the same rotation that I'm looking for in the car. So get the car nice and close to the curb. As you can see, a little bit of understeer again here. Open the wheel, pick the throttle up, run it over here. I use the curb on the inside here to rotate. I'm, I'm carrying the throttle through here, but you're able to accelerate through this part of the corner, as you can see. Up another gear. Use all the curb on the right-hand side here as you're coming off. Turn in just as we get to the end of this curb. You want to use all the curb on the left-hand side here to try and open the corner up as much as possible. You'll see I start, like, I turn in and the car bounces, but then I'm still putting a little bit more wheel into it because I want to get to the middle of the road to then be able to clip the apex on the inside here. Use a lot of curb here. The car's going to push wide. You see I've got probably a little bit extra understeer than I was sort of hoping for the car ran a little bit too wide there you probably want to be a foot closer to the inside so you can get closer to this curb on the right hand side here open the steering up we'll run it right out close to the drs board and run it out to the start finish line and there you go guys that is your walkthrough track guide of week 10 at virginia international raceway i hope this has helped you for your week of racing just a little side note with this one as well. I definitely recommend you play with your brake bias. So this lap was done with the fixed challenge setup. I didn't adjust the bias. I didn't adjust anything. It definitely is favoring a little bit of understeer in the braking zones with just not so much front locking, but just pinching the fronts. Um, but then also you got to focus on that drive as well. So just adjust it a little bit. There'll be certain corners where you might want to actually bring it back a click. And then there'll be other corners where you might want to take it forward a click. So I hope that helps you guys. Good luck for this week's racing. And we will catch you next week for week 11.